But ah, hi. Hello and welcome to Strange Happy <laughs> Hour. I am one of your hosts, Brent the Just Head Metcalf. Along to my left, the dispatcher, Mark Clover. And on the right, Jeff. And of course, this is our midweek episode, which is typically just cut out of our main episode. We call it our, I can't remember at this point in time, for some reason, mini my bar? brain is mini dead. Bottles. Mini no, bar. this is the mini bar. The other yeah. thing, uh, name we have for it. Oh, uh, uh, Top Shelf. Top Shelf. Thank you so much. Course, selection. This <laughs> week, because of the fact that we have... <laughs> We have so many names because of the fact that we have a PlayStation event on Wednesday. We are not recording our episode on Tuesday. We are recording on Wednesday to give you live reactions. And by live, I mean by Friday. So we want to make sure we had a little something for you. So we have each picked one topic, very minor, and we're going to try and get this covered within 20 minutes or less. Please let us know if you enjoy this format. This is only the second time we've done it. We got positive feedback in the first time. We would like to know if people enjoy this enough that we may continue it as a separate show, or maybe just instead of doing top shelf, swap to this. Let us know in the comments floating above me like a crown because I won one one time on Fall Guys before the update. The update now is just null and void. <laughs> All crowns don't count. They're gone. That's not true. That's true. It's true. Just check your game. Oh, it updated I today. I haven't touched it since the update, so... <laughs> It literally dropped today. So, but enough Fall Guys talk. I'm going to go ahead and take the center stage discussing my one topic for this mini bar section, which is all about Nintendo is a reportedly talking to devs about bringing games into 4K for the Nintendo Switch. So this story comes from a multitude of places, but the one place that I got it from is Kotaku.com, which I do enjoy. And they're asking studios to make their Switch games 4k ready there is absolutely no timeline on this this is coming from bloomberg news probably one jason schreier because he tends to pick this stuff up real quickly and yeah. apparently they're announcing new hardware for 2021 right so we're in the middle of the next gen bump series x and s are already out the door they're coming to november 10th we've got sony coming on uh wednesday to tell us their details so i just kind of found this fascinating and wondered if anyone really believes this because i won believe that the history of Nintendo proves that this is not true and that people yeah. would be really upset because Nintendo doesn't do hard gra- hardware upgrades in the same way that people want them to. So the Game Boy Advance moved from the Game Boy Advance to the SP, which just simply moved it to a clamshell design and gave it a backlight. From there, it moved to the Micro, which just made it smaller. Uh, the DS had a DSi, which gave it internal storage memory, got rid of the actual um, Game Boy Advance slot and then put it online. And then the 3DS got the new 3DS, which did bump it up in power. But we're talking about a marginal bump here, not really considerable in the long term of things. Powerful enough that specific games had to be labeled new DS compatible only, but really not compatible in the same way of like moving from 1080p to 4K textures here, which is what they're discussing. Well, that and they don't really make games that are like necessary for 4K. I, mm-hmm. I just I'm wondering if they just want to make sure they're not going to have any issues where if you wanted to play on your port on a 4K TV, it would look the best that it possibly can. That it's still formatted that it won't have any issues. Yeah. Don't know what those issues would be. I'm also not a programmer in those instances, so I wouldn't be able to say. But I could imagine that you could optimize it for 4K TVs to be used with it. Well, I mean, to me, the big thing that speaks out is storage. Like... 4K textures are way more memory intensive when you're talking about storage mm-hmm. than yep. anything be- below it. So that's a problem. And we're talking about the fact that they would have to release a brand new model that can m- utilize these 4K store- uh, textures while also allowing the older models to utilize whatever backup textures are you use. Because I don't think they can downgrade the 4K, right? Like, What do you, what do you mean by downgrade the 4K? Like, like if I were to play a 4K textured game on my switch currently i don't think it would run i think it would have to have a texture that would could run on the gpu right so yes and no um so it depends if they've got a scaler built in so um this this, so this is actually nvidia tech that came out back when the nine uh, the 900 series came out um was the idea that if you're playing an old game an older game anyway that nvidia has come through and given a specific you know upgrade to that that you know dynamically would allocate resolutions on pc for example you could use what's called super sampling so you could have the game render at something obscene like 8K because it's an older game and it doesn't have necessarily the textures to be able to handle it, but then it would downscale the image to fit your monitor 
And the idea is that upscaling does still affect some things to make it better. Now in 4K, if you actually have 4K textures and you downsample that to, or downscale that to, uh, uh, I'm assuming it's 1080p quality on the, the It's 720 the handheld 1080p when it's docked. Okay, it, either way. But the idea is if you're using 4K textures and you're downsampling that, that will still look better than 1080p textures at a 1080p resolution okay. rendered at okay. 1080p. Um, the reason is because then some of the issues that you would run into, like with, um, so anti-aliasing, um, mm -hmm. if, if you yeah. don't know, like if, you know, it is like uh, having a diagonal line on something, but it's that pixelated, like jagged look, anti-aliasing basically blends those colors to make it look like a seamless line. Well, the benefit of downsampling is downsampling handles all of that anti-aliasing for you because those j jagged lines then just blend together anyway into one relatively smooth line. Um, now, is this solution in, in a hardware or software solution? Uh, both. Um, okay. So you have to make sure you have the hardware to handle it first off. I mean, it, you yeah. know, like if you already have the hardware to handle it, then then no, it's just a software issue. But um, and I'm saying that from a Nintendo perspective of Nintendo's never really been known to push pixels. So um, my point right there, it, it's going to be whether or not the NVIDIA hardware or the Hold or, or uh, NVIDIA. The... What's that? <laughs> Hold on, let me get your brownie. <laughs> oh, thank you. I get a brownie point. I like that. There you go. But, um, no, um, it, it really matters if um, the existing hardware can handle it. If not, cool, then yes, it does require a, a hardware upgrade to handle that. But other than that, it's it's just straight up software. You upgrade, literally, you literally just change the textures that are in the game and tell yeah. the engine to render at 4K. You're done, more or less. See... Well, and that's to why Brett's point too. the file size would also be indicative of an issue with cartridges because you can only fit so much. So I would assume, but they've also kind of taken on what everybody else is doing and saying, here's your cartridge. Here's your update online. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. and, and, so, and so that would be a good way to do that because for example, that's the way that call of duty does it. So like mm -hmm. fun fact anyway, like yeah. if you're, if I'm downloading call of duty, modern warfare, I download the game through blizzards, battle.net service. The funny part is that's not even their super high res textures. That's a secondary download that has to happen after the fact. Of course. But then once I get in there too, then there's updates to the, um, the textures that are already involved or, or it's not textures. What are they? What is it? It's, so there's some update like in game that happens that you download before yeah. you load into multiplayer or whatnot to upgrade your textures or, or improve them uh, for efficiency purposes. That kind of thing. So, okay. Um, I think that's a good play to go with is just take a cartridge, make it be the base game, you know, low res textures. If, you know, and, and, and Nintendo is working with developers to bring out 4K, then make it a downloadable option. If the hardware can already handle it, then you're fine. See, I definitely think that's the way to go if they do release a new set of hardware that is going to have the 4K is you would detect the device. Can it yeah, yeah. withhold this update? Go not otherwise. Yeah, yeah. But well, and, and that's that's also assuming that the current switch can't handle it, so. I assume that it can't personally because it came out in 2017. Well, so, but it, it may also depend and on the was, game. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. That is fair. Yeah. Now, so the, the wild 4K, <laughs> there is a couple other things that, that do come to play there. So um, there's a certain HDMI version that can handle 4K. I remember mm -hmm. HDMI 1.4. Somebody's going to correct me somewhere. But if I remember right, HDMI 4, 1.4 can handle 4K 30. Um, and it's not until HDMI 2.0 that you get 4K 60. Um, so what about USB-C ports? So if so USB-C ports can handle pretty much anything depending on the version. So if it's USB, it, USB-C ports by default generally are USB 3.0, um, mm -hmm. 3.1 or 3.2. 3.0 by itself should be able to handle the throughput of 4K. Um, okay. That, that like it, it should be able to handle that throughput. Now it may have some other data that that's happening over there, but for the switches purposes anyway, that would just be video going out to the base station and power mm -hmm. coming back in. That, that that really doesn't you know affect it at all um but if the hdmi that comes out of the base station doesn't support 4k then yes that requires a hardware upgrade like they may just say yeah. oh, here's your 4k base you know or something like that instead yeah that's an interesting point i actually haven't thought of that i was um, thinking of the full console refresh yeah no um I mean, as long as you have everything leading up to it supporting it you should be fine yeah yeah so so real quick before we end this topic for a mini bar this is only supposed to be 20 minutes uh do you think they're releasing a new model in 2021 that'll be 4K compatible? Yes or no? no. Oh. No. No. I don't think I say that. no as well. Yeah. I, I, I would say awesome. no just uh, like I would say if if anything it's a base station upgrade. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, please, I would agree with that. Please let us know what your thoughts are on Nintendo asking developers to make their games 4K ready in the comments floating directly. Can I give one, one last one? Yeah, I just okay. looked it up. The Nintendo Switch dock does contain an HDMI 1.4, which does support 4K 30. There we go. There we go. We know it. There we go. We done. And it did come out March 2017. 2017. That's what I thought. Thank you so much. Uh, it, the comments are floating in front of Mark's glasses. On to <laughs> Handsome John. What's your, what's your mini bar? Oh, my mini bar. Uh, we actually talked about this, I think, a little bit last time uh, about how uh, control is struggling with people in the fact that they're saying that they can't give a ps5 upgrade to the original owners of the game uh their exact quote was given the nature of the situation at hand weren't able to simply flip a switch we believe ourselves to be dealing with the complexities of the matter in a way that ensures the best quality product is delivered to storefronts as the industry navigates the transition to the next gen consoles which, as we learned, in as uh, the Ultimate Edition was just released, people got uh, blogged on Reset Era saying that, well, I have all the DLC in the game, and it changed my game to the Ultimate Edition and upgraded me to the PS, and basically gave me the free upgrade to the PS5. Sure and then, like oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to bullshit. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Believe me, everyone's whiffing it right now <laughs> real hard. <laughs> and not only that, but then they took it away soon after that. I uh, <laughs> makes me so automatically angry. switched to the new Ultimate Edition that it ensures a free upgrade to the next gen platform and then ripped it away from them after telling them, nope, it's not technologically going to be a thing. You, you want to know the like, funny part about that is, is somebody accidentally pushed the button to make that happen, which means yeah. that a bunch of developers had to scramble probably overnight to revert that somehow on the, on the store. So, well, apparently this isn't the first time that's happened. There's apparently been games Ugh. beforehand where if you buy the game and all the DLC, it actually turns the game into the ultimate edition of the game. So it will be given to them essentially. And that's what happened here. I just think that they didn't realize it was automatically going to push. Gotcha. And that's where they got, you know, they got caught in a lie. And not only that, but now they're trying, they have no real way to justify why they did it. Mm -hmm. Not, not yeah, to I say mean, we, we, they weren't we exactly all didn't coming out with a comment saying, Hey, we know what happened. And this is, it, it just was a lie. It was just not, didn't exist. Not to say we all didn't already know that it was a lie, but you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Well, the worst well, part is that they don't give the option for the people who had previously bought this game, which, by the way, including DLC, is eighty dollars. Yeah, so original you people the, who bought this game with all the DLC is eighty dollars, and they don't have any way to upgrade to the PS5 edition. So that is the digital deluxe edition, right? You pay eighty dollars yes. for it. That is the same content that you are getting in this new version, which is called the what is it? Ultimate the edition. Ultimate edition. It is literally the same game. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same game with the same DLC, and not only that, but the the DLC that the uh, deluxe edition that they bought to have all the DLC included just recently had its second DLC drop. Yeah, <laughs> right before this price decrease and bundling that they threw on for the ultimate edition. Oh, okay. yeah, at it, half the price. It it's so strange only uh, because. Man. I would argue that Remedy is not a bad studio. They they've done well enough. And Five Hundred Five as a publisher is a smaller publisher. They they publish games like Abzu. Like this is one of their. I would argue one of their larger games they've published in the past year. And it's just strange because I feel like they've handled these kinds of events well. Like I mean, maybe they haven't come to this level of like scrutiny, and that might be the the factor on it. But all of it is just a big you to the people who are like hey i'm going to spend 80 dollars, or better yet spend 60 dollars and then buy the dlc individually which is also i believe 15 dollars a piece yeah oh and even if you wanted to and say you know what uh if you buy all if you have the game original game and all the deals and you've bought all the dlc even if it wasn't in the deluxe edition and you buy all the dlc the ps5 upgrade will be available mm-hmm no brainer because yeah. all yeah. those people who have that will go and buy that just to get the PS five upgrade. If that's what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing's but a slap for that game. <laughs> I, not to interrupt you, but sorry, but for that game that had issues, even on the PlayStation four pro yeah. with load times and respawns, like it was, there was a lot of people saying that this game was probably supposed to come out on the PS five. 
and they they tried to fit it on the PS4. Yeah. And it would have just done better. Honestly, I think that's more along the lines of Remedy has developed for Xbox for the past couple of years, along with PC, mm-hmm. and they just weren't used to the architecture. That's just me. Uh, I recently played the base game for Control on PlayStation Now before it left at the end of August. It had some problems. Um, oh, to be there, fair, people also complained about the Xbox, uh, the Xbox X. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sad about this whole thing. The, the comments that the 505 and Remedy have both left is just bullshit. It yeah. is bullshit. Mark, you have every right to sneeze. We'll give you an antihistamine when we're done. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, all over the place. Please let us know what um, you think about the Control Ultimate Edition, unless John has another comment, because I cut him off. No, he cut good. me off earlier, motherfucker. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> this is mini bottles. Let's go. Let's roll. Please let us know in the comments floating directly above John, because he's sad he didn't get to finish his thought. Well, and on my <laughs> screen, I just sneezed downward onto John's head, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like you. I don't need to talk. I always need to talk, hence why I'm hosting the show. Dispatcher, <laughs> talk to us about NVIDIA and buying AIM, right? It's that Marvel, like, mm-hmm. evil villain place. They make robots. No, no. Instead, it's ARM. You know, it's it's like oh, the, gotcha. it, it's yeah, it's yeah. this. It's it's this thing right here. Gotcha. Like, they just bought this right here. They bought it for me for $40 billion. Yeah. They bought your uh, arm for $40 billion. billion. <laughs> um, no, no, no. So, uh, NVIDIA... Terminator's arm? <laughs> <laughs> so nvidia bought arm arm is in uh for for those who don't know arm is a uh, small electronics ish computing uh company um they have a lot of open and publicly available ip uh specifically their billion. instructions <laughs> their instruction set for um uh, small processors which fun fact apple is currently moving to a bunch of arm based processors now they have done that for mobile phones but they're starting to do it with desktops now um true i forgot about that and ARM is completely in the mobile space. Um, so ARM Cortex processors used to be the the heart and soul, basically, of a ton of uh, mobile phones. Um, you know, and ARM used to directly uh, produce those anyway. Like, they may not have been the manufacturer, to be honest. It may have been TSM, but um, it, it's still, like, they're still a, a big name anyway in, in the in the space anyway. And they continue to exist uh, uh, pretty pretty well anyway. They're, they're a pretty valuable company. Uh, so NVIDIA has just purchased them for $40 billion from SoftBank. Um, Interesting. So, $40 billion. Now, it's a combined $40 billion evaluation here. Um, what it yeah. is, is 12, uh, SoftBank is going to receive $12 billion in cash um, and $21.5 billion in NVIDIA stock, uh, which, of course, <laughs> as soon as the announcement for the purchase comes out, of course, you know, the NVIDIA price jumps and, well, then the value of that goes from 21.5 or the number of shares they receive unfortunately dips a little bit because of the monetary value and whatever else unless they did it based on a share uh, basis uh, but anyway uh, five billion dollars placed in an earnout clause in the purchase contract uh, so that's going to be an overtime payment um and uh the last bit you know for those of us who have done math of course uh, that of course only comes out to 38.5 billion that's because another 1.5 billion dollars is going to equity for arm employees oh that's cool yeah that's really awesome. cool i think that's a that's a really neat sentiment nvidia is basically saying look we don't want to touch what you guys are doing we love what you guys are doing uh they don't touch any of those spaces of course now nvidia's um um Wang's words were very specific. It's a, he said, arms business, this is a quote, arms business model is brilliant. We will maintain its open licensing model and customer neutrality, serving customers in an industry across the world and further expand arms IP license portfolio. Um, other quotes anywhere are like NVIDIA will retain the name and strong brand uh, and identity of arms. So they basically want to, they said they're going to stay in Cambridge. Um, mm-hmm. They basically don't want to touch what they're currently doing. Um, but they're hoping that ARM's you. processing capabilities are going to be able to expand NVIDIA's AI platforms. Um, but they so, also... Yep. I, I want to interrupt you because you're saying that a company has bought a successful company and is going to let them do what they want mm-hmm. and take care of their employees? Yep. Because they like it's their... Revolutionary. Because they like their <laughs> business model. They like what they do. They like the fact that they're a very open source and IP... Um, next week nvidia will be like you know called out whistleblower they have employee dungeons <laughs> so <laughs> for for arm employees <laughs> well so um they're talking about uh, expansion now the, the funny part about this too is 
I feel like Huang was in in conversations with a ton of um, uh, conversations with journalists. Um, he's very, very specific in trying to dodge legal arguments from the beginning. Um, the, the quote is NVIDIA doesn't design CPUs. We have no CPU instruction set. NVIDIA doesn't license IP to semiconductor companies. So and in that way, we're not competitors. We have every intention to add more IP tools. And also, unlike ARM, NVIDIA does not participate in the cell phone market. He said those are very, very specific words to say this is not about monopolization. <laughs> do not get very afraid. specific words about non monopolizing the industry, of course. So they, they are purchasing into other industries, to be fair. NVIDIA doesn't touch the rest of these markets. Yeah. AI well, and graphics processing are their two biggest markets and their two biggest price points right now. So, or uh, intake or revenue points. So, um, this is brand like new space. The Wang jump on you because he'll, he'll take you down. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wang just wants to own everything. <laughs> no, Wang doesn't want to own everything. That's what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's trying to specifically. Wang is extremely um, fair in shares. No, Correct. No, no. So, so who I'm talking about there is NVIDIA's founder um, and current CEO, uh, Jensen Wang. Um, Jensen Wang. Okay. Yeah. But uh, no. Jensen so, Wang? Yes. We're such children. Continue. <laughs> um, no, so th- this is, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting spot. Like, so ARM is, is definitely one of those companies that sort of takes a, a backseat role now they're sort of like the i don't even want to call them the ibm like i, I guess i could call them the ibm of like the, the cell phone market um mm-hmm. most cell phones are run on arm instruction sets uh, they don't run on uh x86 or x64 because they're too heavy um and would require way too much battery power for the the amount of processing you're doing on a mobile phone for example um, you were saying apple was gonna start sourcing them out so uh, i thought apple, they were pretty much going all in-house Apple, well, so they are, but they're using the ARM instruction set because part of ARM's open source IP is the ARM instruction set for processors. Mm -hmm. Um, So Apple's building is entirely done based on the ARM instruction set. Um, Hmm. Now, now, to be fair, a lot of their their A-series chips already work like the A12 that I have in my iPhone 11, um, mm-hmm. as well as any A-series chip that Apple currently produces for mobile phones or iPads. Currently, uh, those are ARM instruction set based processors. Now, like I said, basically every mobile phone that's out there works on an ARM instruction set. Every Snapdragon processor that you see out there is uh, a, an ARM based instruction set. But um, Mac is tr- or Apple is trying to bring that into the Mac space and bring it into the desktop usage space, which is actually very efficient because arms instruction set is very limited in the number of instructions that are available to it. So it is much more lightweight for simple tasks. Um, So what's the most important point to them buying arms for them? Like, why is this so special? So we don't quite know yet. Um, like, so it, NVIDIA is big into, um, maybe I'm misunderstanding something. No, I'm sorry. It's for NVIDIA's AI platform. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. NVIDIA it, it like is big in the AI space and GPU space. ARM doesn't really provide a whole lot in the way of GPU space because GPUs don't really require like instruction sets on a like an open base, uh, an open platform basis. You know, it, it's 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 a little bit more. It, because it's an add on piece it, it, to it to a base computer a bit with a CPU and its own instruction set, it, it, it doesn't really operate the same way. Um, well, I, I don't I, quite know enough to go into the full technical on that one, but I, I think the key thing here is that just because arm is open source doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to NVIDIA will utilize that technology and give that technology away at the moment it's available. Right? right. Like they can develop the platform. They can develop a version of it, utilize the newest version in house. And then when the next version comes out, they swap to that next version and give the older version out for free. Right. Because yeah. They have control over that that feeding tube now, and they'll Mm -hmm. be the ones who have all the newer technology on the edge of it while still upholding what ARM wants. Well, so Jensen Wang's quote specifically on, I guess, their their goal here now that like there's a lot more, obviously, that's going to come out from this. But um, quote, uniting NVIDIA's AI computing capabilities with the vast ecosystem of ARM CPU, we can advance computing from the cloud, smartphones, PCs, self-driving cars and robotics to edge IoT. Uh, Internet of Things and uh, expand AI computing to every corner of the globe. 
<laughs> you two are children. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm all over. But uh, no, so, I, like, like the the point anyway is is for them to join forces with Arm. Uh, Arm is already in so many different types of small type objects. One letter away. One letter away from AIM. I'm telling you, if they start making robots, we need to get a, a Thor. <laughs> we need to get a Captain America. We have to start soon. I'll be Captain America. There you go. Are you going to leave got, your dick pic on that. Twitter or already Instagram? Already got America's ass. You know what I mean? that's, a, that's America's ass right there. Um, America's ass, yeah. No, so um, I think that the, the biggest thing we'll see out of this is probably some better... Um, introduction of i guess the ai and graphics computing platform that nvidia currently has which should advance the mobile space a good bit uh which yep i'm very hopeful for um so uh, do you do you think we'll end up seeing a huge jump in i don't think it's gonna be huge not not immediately i think it's gonna take a while for that to happen um i i think the 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 biggest thing we can expect to see for the time being is nothing uh which is kind of good to be honest, you know, like most companies that absorb other companies, um, it, this you is know, a company it's trying to diversify in something that may help it in the future. Right. Exactly. Uh, so like, you know, NVIDIA CEO straight up coming out and saying arms business model is brilliant already tells me that they don't want to touch anything about the way that arm does things. Actually, if anything, they want to adopt some things the way some of the way that arm works, which is great. Keep making me good. <laughs> yeah, well, good. pretty much, you know, I, like I, I think at a 40 billion dollar valuation, they must be making good money to, to be able to do that. Yeah. So, um, Wang wants arm. That's my last joke. I promise. <laughs> no, it's not. And you know that. Don't lie to me, damn it. Um, no. Uh, Wang so, wants it all. <laughs> uh, what, so, so I think what's interesting is that I'm going to piggyback off of your comment, Mark, of like, I agree. I don't think it's going to be a big jump. I think the difference is, is that we're going to see small jumps faster over time, yeah. right? Like, obviously not right away, but over time, if they continue to work together and facilitate one another, we're to see them able to actually move faster than before. So it won't necessarily be one large jump. It'll just be incremental that mm-hmm. overall adds to a lot. Yep. On a side note, I want to measure our foreheads because I think we all have massive foreheads, but I am curious who has the biggest <laughs> forehead. Probably me. I don't uh, know, man. Me and you, I think we'd be a competition, Marks. I think Mark would lose on the sh- uh, in the size realm. Yeah, you should push it down. <laughs> <laughs> Any final comments about Wang on anymore? Arm? No, uh, I'm nope. just excited. NVIDIA. I'm excited to see what they do and excited what NVIDIA brings to the mobile space and maybe what Arm brings back to uh, the graphics space or the AI space. So we're recording on 9 15 2020. Can't wait to come back to this episode in two years. <laughs> It's Skynet! It's Skynet! <laughs> it turns out I was right. It's AIM all along. <laughs> Please let us know whether or not you think AIM has taken over the world in the comments floating directly in front of my Game of Thrones shirt because Game of Thrones was tainted until the Winds of Winter comes out. It's true. But that is yeah. our mini bar episode. It is under 30 minutes. That's what I said at the beginning. Not 20. Don't even try and correct me. It doesn't matter because I won't <laughs> look at it. You can leave comments wherever you want and maybe I'll look at those. But until next time... Cheers. We'll see you on Friday. Cheers.